Well, good morning. Hallelujah. If you want to grab your word today, grab your sword, your Bible app, whatever it is that you have. On this first Sunday in the year 2024, stand in honor of God's word just these moments that we find ourselves Father speak like only you can speak and we yield ourselves to it now in Jesus name listen here I want you to go touch four people one of them you touch them and say gates another one you touch them and say doors another one you touch them and say windows another one you touch them and say whales and say be opened go do that now four people Amen. As you make your way back up, please, you can take your seats there. You can take your seats right there. Guys in the back, you can just bring it down for me just a little bit. Keep it going, but just bring it down just a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm so grateful today. I really, really am. I mean, looking at uh, those 11 individuals that went down in Jesus' name today, I am telling you, it was... Um, it made me recall when I was baptized and oh man, just so moving, so moving and so much support uh, today that was shown. So grateful and so thankful for each and every one of you and of course for them um, as well. My brothers and sisters, this, uh, what we intend to do here, our intention is, if you've been going to this church for at least more than one year, we really try to lay we take January and February and just try to lay a strong foundation for the entirety of the year. We don't just release the word of the Lord for the new year and then just go on with whatever else we want to do. And so if you would allow us, you know, we're going to take every Sunday here leading up most likely unto the church anniversary, which will be the last weekend in February. That last weekend in February will be our 16 year church anniversary. We're going to, we're going to teach on this, amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Ah, our sweet 16, hallelujah. Mm. Um, so, but we're going to take dedicated time and we're going to really unpack, unravel, unwrap because something that I don't want for us is for these things to be cliche. And, and it could be so easy for it to do that, right? Matter of fact, even some of these words here now, that's that's what they've been, you know, I'm just believing God to open a door, you know, and it just, it just becomes cliche. I mean, it, it may, we may mean well, but it, it doesn't have the substance behind it. And, and so this is the necessity of teaching. It is the necessity, amen, of, of um, expository teaching, if you would. It is the necessity of really saying, what is God's heart around this? So we're going to take about the next six to seven weeks-ish, and each Sunday morning, we're going to unpack more about God's heart around gates, doors, windows, and wells, our response to that, what it means, uh, and how the enemy sees these things. So just know that's our kind of map a little bit over the next six to seven weeks. Um, man, we shouted for so long on New Year's Eve, and, um, you know, I think the kids did like 39 laps. I got to, I got to, <laughs> 45 laps. I'm like, yo, I know who to grab now the next time I'm about to run a lap. I'm going back there and grab somebody. I'm going to grab somebody back in the youth ministry. Um, they just took off and they just didn't stop. Um, but watch this. I don't want us just to dance. Oh, Lord, that would be so disappointing. 
we can't just dance we can't just shout we can't just you know be exuberant as we should but we can't just be that with no foundation no understanding no depth and so i hope that you can appreciate that's what we intend to do here and so allow us to to to, to methodically take some time and walk through this amen in the name of jesus and so i want to ask us if we can um to turn to the book of amos and you can keep it going right there guys in the back i appreciate it just keep it right there for for a bit uh for me but if i can ask you for a moment uh to turn to the book of Amos. <clears throat> Chapter 3. Beginning in verse 1. Amos chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. We're going to read, amen, verses 1 through 7, perhaps. Really quick, just because it's important to note, don't fall into that myth of minor prophets and major prophets. Well, you know, Amos only got a couple chapters, you know, Zephaniah, a couple chapters, Zechariah, comparable to Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and all of this. Generally speaking, the only reason that terminology was used was just because of the length of their book. But sometimes big messages come in small packages. <laughs> and so uh, the major prophet Amos is what we're going to read here just a little bit uh, today. Listen to this message that the Lord has spoken against you, O people of Israel, against the entire family that I rescued from Egypt. We'll keep going. We'll go. We'll flow through maybe six or seven verses if we can uh, back to our video. So verse two. From among all the families on the earth, I have been intimate with you alone. That is why I must punish you for all your sins. Watch this for a second. Can two people walk together? Stay here for a moment without agreeing on the direction? Class assignment right now. As you're starting off this year, who's close to you but going in a different direction? I'm not finna put you in a place where you need to make a decision here, but what I'm saying is you need to at least know if we're going in opposite directions. It says, how can two walk together unless they agree on the destiny, the direction? It's not necessarily agree on the next step, but really what this is, if you really study this out, this is talking about what it does not agree on what the end state would be. Not on whether we agree whether Red Lobster or Olive Garden, Applebee's or Chili's, carne asada or shredded um, beef. No, it's, it's not. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the end of a thing. Do we agree on the outcome? Do we agree on the objective? Do we agree on the finish line? We can agree on the finish line and may not agree on all these other steps, but we still can get to the finish line because we agree on the objective. How can two walk together? What this really also makes us think about is, yes, how you and I use the term friend. The term we use, friend, this is my friend, this is my close friend, this is my homie, this is my BFF, this is my road dog, this is my, I mean, all these things, I mean, that we, we tell them everything, but, 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 I, but do you agree on the direction? Amos is dropping heavy weight right here from a revelation standpoint, and he's saying, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement about the direction? And I don't know if we can hear anything more important 
in the first month of the year. Because you don't want to get to August and realize, yo, I didn't know that you didn't think this is where we were going. Verse 4. Does a lion ever roar in a thicket without first finding a victim? Does a young lion growl in its den without first what? Catching his prey. The translation here, in other words, if you hear the roar, something has been caught. The, the lion doesn't roar for nothing. If there's a roar, either there's an enemy or there is a prey. The roar is either signifying to the rest of the tribe, the rest of the pride, the rest of the group that, hey, an enemy is approaching, I'm going out to handle business, y'all go do what you got to do, but I'm going out. So that roar is to send a sign. If, if there's an enemy that's coming in, I'm letting you know somebody got this territory on lock and you might want to go ahead and about face before we have to handle some business here. Or that roar from the lioness is saying, we caught something. It is to say, family, gather, ring, be ring the bell, it's dinner time. Without first catching his prey. Verse 5. Does a bird ever get caught in a trap that has no bait? Does a trap spring shut when there's nothing to catch? When the ram's horn blows a warning, shouldn't the people be alarmed? If the lion roars, does the pride follow the roar? Does the pride... Does the pride ignore the roar? See, when an alarm is sound, <clears throat> yes, in the time that we're in now, this first Sunday in January, we're sounding God's alarm for what he is saying, what he has said, but I want to know who's listening. If the lion roars, does the pride follow? Mom and dads out here, single dads, single moms that are in here, and you're leading your house and leading your family and whatever that dynamics look like. But when you roar, there has to be, listen, praise God, there has to be uh, pa secret passphrases that families have. They have to be secret codes that they can send to one another in town or what some would call dis a distress signal or a distress code that, that if things go crazy or awry, you won't be able to tell your whole family things going on, but you can send a short message. And because all the family are agreed on what the passcode is they know what that meant my family has one I'm trusting that your family has one if you don't uh, that's that's pretty much number one handle that today set up something a passphrase a passcode a color a riddle a rhyme something that when I see this text that that's all I needed to know I'm dropping everything I'm out of here I'm doing this I gotta go you gotta do it. so that roar says to the entire pride an enemy is approaching if that roar comes from the from the line from the male lion but if the roar comes from the lion is, if it were, it is to say that we have caught dinner. But the roar requires a response. <laughs> Gates, doors, windows, and wells is a roar. And you and I, are, 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 as we are roaring these these words, or we are, as we are roaring and uttering by the prompting of the Spirit of God, amen, and that's why it's not just, you know, up a window we we know if you believe I'm, I'm, where's the roar because our daddy is the lion of the tribe of judah he has a roar your worship should not sound like a little kitty cat your praise your prayer your fellowship our bond together shouldn't be like some kittens hanging out in a little ki kitchen area and they're waiting for some little food to be dropped their way. But when you and I come together, it is the pride of lions that roar like our father. Gates open and sometimes it is the roar that sends away. The animal don't even know what's being said, but the roar of it, the roar of it, the roar of it. Amos is laying this pretty, this perfect picture out for us. And there's certain wells, gates, doors, and windows that, that would not open up themselves until the roar precedes it. Lazarus! 
come forth and the door of the tomb had to be opened. Him saying, Lazarus, come forth. Watch verse 7. And guys, y'all can begin to fade it out, please. Verse 7. Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything until he what? Reveals it. He reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. The Lord does nothing unless he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. Yes, this speaks of the office of the prophet. This speaks of the one who it is their, it is their primary occupation to hear God on the behalf of nations, peoples, tongues, and tribes. Prophet, listen, the Lord does nothing unless he first would reveal it to his servants, the prophets. But here's the revelation that I want you to get behind it, because if we stay there, then that means if I'm going to know something, that means I got to go find a prophet. There's prophetic utterances and prophetic mantles, even if that may not, may not be someone who is sitting in the office of a prophet. But what I want to hone in on here for a moment, my brothers and sisters, from a more accurate rendering of this text is this. It's not God does nothing unless he reveals it to his prophets as it is God needs his prophets to say what he said in order for it to happen. That means when whomever releases a word from the Lord, it means nothing until you start saying it. We can't march through this year saying Apostle Jamie said. That ain't your word yet. When it's your word, you're commanding, you're decreeing, you're declaring, you're releasing, you're renouncing. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord God. Do you hear what I'm saying? There must be. And so what I want us to get here, and, and, and this is incredible, and we spoke a little bit about it uh, during the time of the announcements. A man, prophetic agreement. There was a, a, a very large gathering that was happening in the city, and, and they had asked me to come and be a part of it. Yep, yep, absolutely, I'll be there for sure. I care about this city. I, I believe it. I don't know how we, I'm going to have the time to do it, but I'm going to be there. Absolutely. And we're going through these planning sessions, going through these planning sessions, and then, hey, man, someone from the media came and wanted to interview everybody that was part of the steering team, and they said, well, you know, Apostle Jamie, you know, what's your purpose here? What's your assignment? Why, why are you actually a part of this? And I'm going to tell you with no hesitation, it had to be been the Spirit of God because I didn't, I didn't know they was coming. I didn't know those guys were coming. Before I could even consider what I would say, right out of my belly right out of I said I am here for prophetic agreement and for apostolic covering and then the question went to what is that <laughs> <laughs> prophetic agreement and this is what I was saying earlier when Pastor Will and I was up here talking it's not just that the prophet declares something that no one else knows the other side of prophecy is you saying something and the prophet saying that's God it's you saying, here's what I sense. Here's what I heard God say. Here's the direction I think we're going. And the prophet would come into agreement. So it's not just asking what God is saying, but the prophet also wants to affirm and confirm what you're doing. And this is vitally important because there is major shifts that are occurring in an undercurrent fashion that is going to become visible. And my brothers and sisters, the opportunities, the openings that you and I are going to be given, I mean, you may come up to an open door and you are unsure whether this is your door or not. It is open, but you don't know if it's yours or not. In that moment, what you need is agreement. In that moment, what you need is a confirming sign or not or whether this is God. <laughs> So how do you get prophetic agreement? Of course, the Spirit of God. Of course, the Word of God. You can actually get prophetic agreement from the Spirit of God himself, the Holy Ghost himself. We took time, talked about that. You can get prophetic agreement, amen, from the Word of the Lord, where the Word itself confirms itself. Confirms itself. 
Amen. But then there is the agreement that comes from another blood washed believer. Where that someone else comes into agreement on that specific thing. And I want to make sure that when we hear the scripture and we read the scripture, it is not just God saying, I'm about to do this. Let me make sure I go tell all the prophets so they can let everybody know. Generally speaking, that there's accuracy in that. But it is the other side of the coin. It is God is saying, I'm about to do this or I am doing this, but it can't manifest until I have prophetic agreement in the earth. And so there's things that you may have said to your family, hey, we're going to do this this year. But if everybody didn't get on board with it, it didn't happen. Not because God didn't say it, but because there wasn't enough agreement. Parents to children, there has to be agreement. Husbands to wives, wives to husbands, there must be agreement. Shepherd to sheep, there must be agreement. Supervisor to trainee, employer to employee, there must be agreement. And can I tell you something? It's been freeing for me for all these years since I got this revelation. You don't have to like it to agree. You don't even have to fully understand it to agree. Sometimes it'll just resonate in your spirit, but you don't quite understand all the dynamics of it. But it just resonates in your spirit and you say, you know, what? I can say yes. I can say yes. I don't even know the full plan, but I can say yes because my spirit bears witness with it. That's what? Prophetic agreement. And I believe that God has been shouting some things from the rooftops, but there hasn't been enough prophetic agreement from those that dwell in the house. Can I get a witness in here? Why are we saying it like this? We're saying it like this because, amen, as God speaks, as he as as heaven speaks and has spoken, you and I must begin to say, what is my response when a prophetic word is released to you or to me, whether individually at an altar, amen, during a time of meeting, greet, after a service, you're speaking to a man, a woman of God, and they say, I see God doing this. God told me to remind you of that. Whatever the case may be, when that word comes forth, do not be the one that's just a recipient. Don't just say, I'm just a sponge soaking it all up. Sponges get out of the church. I might want you to be a sponge. I want you to say, what's my response? Because that sponge can be full of water. But until it gets ringed out, it has no purpose. Ring, come on. Don't just say I'm soaking. I'm dealing with some sacred cows here now. I'm just soaking it up. I'm just soaking it up. God is saying so much. I'm just soaking it all in. No, God, we refuse to be religious like that anymore. I'm not just soaking it all up. As I'm receiving it, I'm saying, God, what's my response? What do I do? How do I act now? What's my behavior? Who do I need to call? That's truly ex- receiving the word. I w- right now, ask yourself, the last three prophetic words you got, what have you done with them since you've received them? What have you individually have done since the, the prophetic words you receive? Aside from saying, you know, that's my word. What have you done? Where have you said, Lord, now give me instruction around this prophetic word? Now, Lord, what level of obedience is required from me in order for that to come to pass? Do not allow the prophetic word to fall on, listen to this, death spirits or dead spirit. Don't let it fall on a dead spirit. Your ear heard it, but your spirit has to come alive to it. I want to speak here. Prophetic agreement. Prophetic agreement is what? is what pushes the kingdom forward. So when I told you at the beginning of the service, go touch four people and say, gates open, doors open, windows open, wells open. That was activation of coming into prophetic agreement of what the Lord is saying. Why do we do that? Because it's not enough for God to say it. Watch this. I'm finna mess somebody up. God doesn't rule the earth. The scripture says the heavens of the heavens belong to the Lord. And the earth, what? He has given to the sons of men. So it's not, well, God said it. Well, yeah, he said it from heaven, but who in the earth is saying it? Because this is where we live, this is where we dwell. The authority, oh my goodness. The authority, if you're taking notes, the authority comes from the agreement. So that's why when you pray, Sister Kim, in Jesus' name, the authority of Jesus' name works for you because you're in agreement with whatever it is that Jesus has said. You're in agreement with whatever it is that heaven has said. So out of the agreement comes the authority. Don't let this go over your head today, church. This is so important. 
Because as you and I evaluate throughout the course of this year, and if something doesn't go the way that we believe in, the way that we believe that God has spoken to us, you now know what to check. Let me check the agreement. Let me check the level of agreement. If it's who I needed to be in agreement with, was I in agreement? And was I in agreement with someone that I probably should not have been in agreement with? Elijah said, what agreement does, does light have with dark? What agreement does fresh water have with bitter water? What agreement, amen, do we have with Baal? If Baal be God, what? Serve him. But if God be God, serve him. It is agreement. And now I'm about to try to control myself because this is, this is Wednesday night. And this is why we're teaching on associations, alliances. Because, Minister Jean, sometimes the, the, because of the thing that we're aligned with, we can't come into agreement with the things of God. Because I'm aligned with something else. Wow. Wow. I'm aligned with something else, so it's keeping me from coming into agreement with something that God is saying. And then we look back and say, well, God, why didn't it happen? God, why didn't you do it? God, I was believing for this. And God said, because you was in agreement with the wrong thing. And you never came into agreement with what I was saying. That's why when, when I say shout amen and you shout amen, that is what? It is so. It is written. So let it be done. Do you know how powerful your amen is? Come on, somebody. When you say, God, whatever you said, amen to it. God, whatever you've released, amen to it. Hallelujah. Amen to the prayer. Amen to the wells. Amen to the doors. Amen to my future. Amen to the destiny. So let it be written. So let it be done. Somebody shout amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody say, I agree, I agree, I agree. Come on, trust somebody say, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Come on, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> so for a moment, when God speaks it, or when it's released from heaven, there must be a response and a release in the earth. I know you know this, I know you heard me say this before, but it's imperative that we understand this. Uh... The scripture says, what we hear in secret, shout it or declare it from the rooftops. Woo! And so the Lord will reveal something to you in your prayer closet. And he'll say, this is my perfect will for my people. Release it. Decree it. Write about it. Post about it. God revealed this to me. God showed this to me. God said, this is what he is doing in this time. Allow that prophetic utterance to come from you. You better, you don't have to be called prophet in order to release a prophetic word from you. Come on. I heard God say this. I heard God say this. You speak over your children and say, I know what's going on in that school system. But here's what God has told me about your life. And I would rather believe God. Yeah. Yay. The Bible says, whose report will you believe? I know what the x-ray may have said, but I believe God. I know what the CAT scan may have said, but I believe God. The medicine is not working, but I'm coming into agreement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 13, second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse one. If you don't mind just flipping on over there, second Corinthians chapter 13 and let's begin at verse one. If you got it, say, I got it. If you got it, say, I agree with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the third time I am coming to I am coming to visit you. And as the scripture says, the facts of every case, this is now bringing us into the courtroom. He's bringing us into the judicial system. The facts of every case must be established by the testimony of what? You know how many people are innocent? But somebody said they saw somebody that looked like them. I'm going to drop something here for you. 
the testimony of a witness can be greater than the testimony of the person themselves. So you can stand and say, I was not there. And someone can say, but I saw someone who, about the same build, same structure, same color. It had to be you. And this person can get locked up because of the word of a witness over the word of the person that says, that ain't me. We know that's wrong, but I want to just let you understand the significance of a witness. And a witness can be for you or against you. So here's what I'm, I see. I can't, Lord, I got to go, but listen. Hey, hey, you almost need to go to everybody in your circle and say, if you had to testify on my behalf, what would you say? If you had to speak regarding my character, my integrity, and dare I say my whereabouts, what would you say? Isn't it interesting how they take the word of others about you more than what you say yourself? But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, let another man's lips. This is why you want to be very careful with the ones, again, that's who you call friends, but the witnesses that are there that would either corroborate your story, your testimony, your life, or those that would say, as Peter did, I never knew him. <laughs> Yo, this was Peter, like the main brother, the main guy. Like, like. Peter said, you know, I, I wasn't there. Can I say something? This is going to be for another day for another message, but can I just say something? Oh, Lord. Given the right circumstances and under the right amount of pressure, you don't know what somebody might say or do. We would like to think, but under the right circumstances and the right amount of pressure, we have to be honest and say, we're not sure how they would respond. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every court case will be settled and established that speaks of agreement. Church, I'm going to try to wrap, run through three key things here. Church, it doesn't matter what God has said about gates and doors, windows and wells. Are you a witness? Are you one with whom would repeat and restate and re-utter what he has said? It doesn't matter until I come into agreement. Oh, that's my church's word. No. Oh, that's word of the Lord for the year to the body of Christ. It's not until you come into agreement. Do you have that? Let me say this to you. Don't ask God for another door, another well. Some of y'all, y'all didn't even know that you can ask for God to open a well until the word was released. You just think, God, open the door. And Lord, pour out a blessing from your windows. And God said, listen, I got so much more than that. Watch this. Gil, I, can't, I don't got time to do it today, but well before you... El well... well <laughs> Yeah, or long, <laughs> long before. Thank you. Long before you ever see a door, you have to see the gate. So think about all the years we've been asking God to open the doors, and God said, you didn't even get into the city yet. The gate, and that's why, thank praise God for our social media team, the way that they laid that graphic out was intentional. The gate must come before the door. Now, for a moment, I'm not going to ask you to do it, but we need to say, God, I was in ignorance all those years asking you to open the door. How many times, think, I mean, you just answer this your own self, but how many times you ever say, Lord, open the gate before two weeks ago? 
God says, no, 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 the, the door, when you see the door, you must have already passed the gate. And there's no way you're going to see the window. Listen, 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 listen. Lord, help us. Don't ask God to open another door, another gate, another window, or another well, number one, without understanding his sequence. But here's the second one, and it's a major one. Don't ask him to, <laughs> to open another gate door, window, or well until you walk through the ones he's already opened. I could totally give the benediction right here because God convicted my heart and then through several other conversations over this last week or so. Son, my people don't even see the gate that's already open for them. Yes, Lord. Hear this. God, give me words here. Here is the problem, Elder Hills. When we say, God, open a door, God, open a window, or I'm believing God to do this, or this is what I'm praying for, this is what I'm believing for. Here's another place of, I'm just going to say, ignorance. We ask God to open a door as if it's my door. Elder Matlock, here's what the Lord said to me. He said, Jamie, the reason it's called, I'm sorry, uh, David, Amari, can you put the graphic back up there for me for a moment? The reason it's called divine openings, number one, you can't open it. Watch this. Number two, you don't even know that it needs to be open. Number three, God said, Jamie, and this is Amory. I'm going to call on everybody for the end of the service. And <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what's really happening a lot of times when I do stuff like that? Other pastors probably do. But you know really what I'm doing? I'm trying to find agreement when I do that. So whenever I call names out, that's really what I'm doing. But listen, 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 listen. Amory, listen. God says this year, and really all years, I'm not trying to open what you want open. Wow. Wow. Otherwise, Brother Furnace, I will have called it Greater Faith's Openings, Jamie's Openings, Chauncey's Openings. Why is it called Divine Openings? Watch this. Not only do you not have the ability to do it, you don't know that it needs to be, but God says, watch this. <laughs> Doors that I open, no man can shut. How can that be? How can that be? Free. I'm really about to ruin. Somebody better come. Go grab me a king's kid. Go get me a king's kid. How can he say doors that I open, no man can shut? Because it's a door that a man or human or the earth did not open. Heaven opened it. Lord, give your people understanding here in these moments. I was, I don't know the right word to say, convicted. I was convicted. As the Lord said, Sister Ida, I'm not opening none of the doors that the church people want open. I'm not opening none of the windows that the church people want open. I'm not opening none of the wells that the church people want open. Who's disappointed? I'm not opening none of the gates that the church people want. God says there's gates that I want to open for you. There's doors I want to open for you. There's windows I, God says, want to open for you. Now, it's, Stay in the spirit. But every one of us right now, we could 
oh, we know exactly what doors. <laughs> we know exactly what doors we want to be open, what doors we want to close. We know what gates we know. I mean, we got, Lord, I want to show you a map, Father. I can show you a map of the house. Here's what it is. Watch this, my brothers and sisters. The Lord has said to me, Jamie, it's what I want to open. So that's why it's called divine openings. So what it means is all I have to do is be in agreement with whatever he wants to open. I like, like, like the formula is God, check this out. You know what's best for me. Yo, I can't help nobody at him. God, you know what I need more than what I think I need. God, the thing that I think I want might be the thing that would destroy me. But you know what I need. No. God says, don't tell my people. I'm not just throwing out keys and saying, go use and open any door you want to open. God says, Jamie, there's already preset gates, doors, windows, and wells that this is the year and the divine timing for them to open. And it has nothing to do with them, but everything with, watch this now, for the plans that I have for you. Mm, the thoughts that I think towards you. Now, I'm going to say it, church, and you got to just flow with me. But the only person who has an issue with that is a selfish person. That it has to be my way. It has to be my door. No, God, I've been praying for this for seven years. No, God, that got to be the well of my promotion this year. The window of my new marriage this year. God, it got to be the door of my new house this year. And God said, no, you're going to rent for another five years. It's my doors, God says. God says, I can let you open it. Sister Nicole, God says, I can let you open it. And if I let you open it, any person can close it. If I let you open it, any person like you can close it. But God says, if you let me open it, It's the doors I want to open this year, God says. And so your, your best interest, my best interest, it behooves of us to say, Father, what doors do you want to open over my life today? God, what windows do you want to open over my life? God, what wells? God, what gates are you opening for Jamie? What gates is inscribed that you know the purpose, you know the steps that I take, you know the way that I take. And when you have what? Tried me. God, I shall come forth as pure gold. Father, I don't want you to do something that is not already on your agenda. I'm, I'm not fasting to get you to do something that you don't already want to do. But while we're fasting, whatever is already on your agenda, whatever is already in motion, I, that's a word for somebody. God says, I already got some things in motion for you. Don't let nobody get you off track. Don't let nobody pull you away. Right when I, you're in the boat shot, you're on the motion, you're on the way, you're right there. Somebody say, any way you bless me, Lord, I will be satisfied. However you want to touch greater faith family. God, however you want to move over the house of Benjamin. Oh, God, you can do that thing. So now every individual house must come into agreement with what God is saying over the spiritual house. Father, here's what Jesus said, right? At his worst point of his life, Brother Francisco, here's what he said. Nevertheless, not my door, not my will, not my well, not my gate. I know how I want to exit, but God, you know how you want to exit me. Nevertheless, 
not my will, but your will be done. And notice what happened. The strength that he received. Notice now he, he never had to go back to Peter and James and John and ask them why they were still sleeping. Because when you submit to whatever door he wants to open, everybody else becomes irrelevant. Because he so strengthened you that whether you're with me or against me, I know he's for me. Somebody say, I got it, I got it, I got it. Watch this. Do you really got it? Do you really got it? Do you really got it? Go touch seven people and say, I'm in agreement with you that I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Come on, online, put it in the chat. Come on, say, I got it. Put it in there seven times. From my house in Oklahoma, from my house in Mississippi, where I'm at in Jersey. Come on, I got it, I got it. I'm in North Carolina, I got it, I got it. I come into agreement with you. Seven is the number of affirmation. Send a shot. If you're in the hospital, go tell seven nurses, huh? tell seven doctors, I'm in agreement that I'm coming out of this place. Oh, glory to God. Somebody praise the Lord in here. I said, somebody shout unto the Lord that God, anyway, you want to do it with tears in my eyes. God, you do it. Here's how, here's how uh, we'll try to give you this last one for today. Amara, you can begin to help me with something back there. Church, hear this warning before we leave. You can remain standing if you want, that's fine. Say whatever you want, but hear this. This is going to sound very what's the word it's going to sound very directing but hear my heart more than my voice you ought not to do anything without the right level of agreement minister gill you could have know that you know that you know that you heard the lord and the father says find agreement but I know I heard them. Finding agreement isn't because you haven't heard them. It's because you have. Agreement is only necessary if you've already come to a place of conclusion. So asking for agreement is not that you don't hear God or that you don't believe God. But it is the opportunity to say, my spirit bears witness with what you're saying God is doing in this season of your life. And now because you've come to me, let me add to your revelation. Yes. Listen carefully. Listen to this and then I'm going to give you the warning. When Jezebel was tormenting all the prophets, across 1st and 2nd Kings when she manipulated Ahab and really took the kingdom from him and began to have the prophets of God killed and all these things the scripture says that Jezebel was targeting one main head prophet, chief prophet Elijah and she said you know what by this time tomorrow your life should be like what you did to the 450 prophets of Baal. Listen, church. The scripture says that Obadiah, another prophet who has his own book, went and took prophets and hid them in caves in groups of 50. 
and fed them with water and pulse or just water and vegetables, the bare necessities. He took care of them. Listen to this. I want somebody to catch this prophetic. Pastor Bernard, he took care of these groups of 50 prophets out of his own stash. And see, the Lord says, you think I want to bless you because you deserve it. I want to bless you that if I say take these 10 families under your wings for the next six months, you can take care of these 10 families and your family doesn't lack one day. That's why God wants to bring increase, not so we can have a parking space. Obadiah hid them in caves by 50 because Jeze Jezebel's reign was going to come to an end. And when her reign came to an end, they need to be prophets that can now begin to release them into the new era. That means Obadiah and Elijah had to be in agreement. Elijah said, watch this. I'm a, I'll be the one out front. Watch this now. Y'all I don't know the word. What's the word when you can not disguise, but when you become a, uh, I don't know, it's a red herring. When you, when you, it, it's not the thing. A decoy, whoever said that. Elijah said, I'm going to be out front and be the decoy. Jezebel will come after me. While she's coming after me, Obadiah, you start hiding. And see, sometimes the Lord will let you go through what you go through to be a decoy for him to do something else over here that the enemy could. They had to come into agreement. Here's the warning. Here's the warning. I will only write two on the board today, and I'll give you the other two next week. God said, for every, for every gate, the devil, mm, for every gate, the devil has a pitfall. And for every door, the devil has a pothole. Let me give you these two here today. And what the Lord says to the Jacqueline is, we can't be deceived by the openings because the enemy is going to create his own openings for us to fall through. So while you're walking to the gate, moving in the direction to the door, while you're in proximity to the window or the well are you looking for the potholes and the pitfalls here is the here is the here is the confirming logos to tie in that rhema when they didn't know what to do with joseph pastor what did they do they threw him in a pit saying it's over he won't be able to survive this one the enemy doesn't want you to walk through the door he wants you to fall in the pit and the lord said jamie warn them before we conclude this service today. warn them that for every door there is a trap door On your road to the gate being opening, there'll be potholes that wants to destroy your undercarriage, that wants to destroy your foundation. The potholes is in the foundation. So that means don't be so focused on this gate, this door, this window, this well, that you don't look down and say, hold on, wait, I better swerve. I better dodge. I better duck in the name of Jesus. And so my prayer, and, and really, your prayer has to begin to be right now. God, give me discernments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 